Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today I'm going to show you some of my drumstick prototypes from about, you know, 25, 26 years ago when I started making sticks. I really didn't know what I was doing. I had turned spindles uh, for staircases and things like that, so I was good at that. I knew how to use a lathe, I knew how to use lathe tools, everything like that, but making a drumstick is a completely different thing, and especially a matched pair. So I experimented for about three years. Uh, the first thing I did uh, many years before that was I made a drum set stick for myself, but that was just basically taking an older stick and putting it on the lathe and retooling it and then sending that to Vic Firth so they could mass produce it. And that ended up being my drum set stick that I still use today. So I'll show you some, uh, some of these different tips and talk about the little uh, bit of history that went into this. Uh, what I'm going to do here is grab my phone first and just take uh, some close-ups and just talk about some of these things. So I started out just experimenting with a barrel tip, which I still make and love, because that's always been one of my favorite tips. I think it's great for articulation, it's great for rolls, so I've always made that barrel tip. But what I was doing, what I, I was experimenting with different sleeves that I was carving in there, with the lathe tools just to add more weight and to see what that would feel like. I still do that sometimes but they're never this big <laughs> so that's what this ha uh, came from and this is a wood called ash which is pretty inexpensive I had a whole bunch of it and what I did was I just uh, I would use it to build cabinets and things like that I just would take the scraps and make sticks out of it and then uh, this next pair we have some maple sticks here Maple's a great wood for sticks, very light, as you all know. And this was a different kind of tip that I was experimenting with. It was a failure. I didn't like the way it looked or sounded. And next to it we have this pair of oak sticks. Now I did like these. It was barrel with a smaller sleeve. sleeve. Uh, later on, uh, as you'll see, I went even smaller with that sleeve to add some weight. Now I just, I don't do that at all. Um, sometimes I do, but now I just make the tip a little bigger. It adds a lot of time to making the stick, putting that thing on there. And next to this we have a pair of pipe band sticks that I was experimenting with. These are all maple once again. And the taper thickens. And then next to this we have this really strange pair of zebra wood. I had just gotten the zebra wood and I was just kind of having some fun with it. And you see that fiasco right there. <laughs> they feel terrible, but beautiful wood, kind of a waste. And then we have some cherry. Now this is a tip that I made for a long time for a lot of pipe band drummers. And a lot of guys still use these. I don't make it that much anymore, but cherry is a good wood for sticks. It is lighter. And then next to that we have uh, my first set of teardrop drum set sticks. I made a bunch of these for a guy in Europe. Probably 20 or 30 pairs. And this is my first big order. And these were yellow heart, which is a great wood. Not too expensive. It's very stable. So this is a pair of those, and these are actually very functional. It's not a tip I use, but he loves them. Uh, next we have a pair of maple. Pretty interesting little sleeve there big tip there. And now we have what I uh, ended up on with the small sleeve. And these I still make. Uh, this is a little bit of extra weight on that barrel tip. And these are maple as well. And then we have another pair of cherry sticks. This ended up being my prototype for my current barrel tip sticks. This was the first pair. They sound great. They felt great. And I knew I had it. The taper was good. So this is basically the prototype for those. I know many of you have those. And then we have another pair of round, large barrel tips, which I still make. And these are, again, our pipe band sticks. And then we have my first pair of Purple Heart, which I was experimenting with, which at first I didn't think was going to work. Turns out I got some really crappy Purple Heart. And it was terrible. And I stopped using it for a while. But then I talked to a friend of mine who's a really good woodworker. He says, give it another shot and just use heartwood. And that's what I did. That made all the difference in the world. And I bought a bunch of Purple Art heartwood. And the sticks are incredible now. 
that for those of you who have them, I'm sure you'll agree. And then this is a round tip pair of zebra wood. I still make these, and I'm going to get some more zebra wood soon. And a really interesting taper experiment here, which was kind of nice, a very thick stick. This is actually a three-quarter inch drum core kind of stick. It's made from ash. I sold quite a few of these at first. I stopped making them because people would do crazy rim shots and break them. So it just wasn't cost effective for that. And then we have a nice pair of teardrop sticks with an interesting taper. And another pair of drum set sticks. I made an order of 50 pairs of these for a guy in Australia many, many years ago. I don't know what happened to him. If you're out there, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> I'm sure he's still got the sticks. And these were oak. And these came out great. They're a little short for me. You want them very short. These are, aren't even 16 inches. They're about 15 and 3 quarter. And finally, we have this really whacked out pair of giant tipped maple sticks. What that were a, an experiment for a pipe band. Complete failure there. So you see these sticks and how weird they are. But the idea with all this, it's all about experimentation. Really, if you're going to get good at anything, you got to fail a lot. That's anything in life. So I would just mess around, basically, and waste a lot of wood. Not real expensive wood. Every once in a while, I'd get some zebra wood, and I'd mess with that. Or, like I said, the Purple Heart. And that ended up, you know, you're just losing kind of money making firewood. But they ended up being pretty interesting. And I have sold some as display sticks, even when they weren't functional. Uh, and then eventually you get, you know, really good at it and you get faster. Uh, some of these sticks would take me two, three hours a pair to match them up at first. Because it's very hard to do that. And I'm not using a duplicator. So I'm doing it all, you know, by itself, uh, matching up that stick. Uh, but I am using a dowel maker, so at least that helped. At first I wasn't even doing that. I was taking squares and turning them, which is, there's a lot of chatter there. It's not good for your for your hands. So I know a lot of you are interested in this, and a lot of you are interested in the whole drumstick process, and you want to make them yourselves, and I think that's great. Uh, you know, the whole idea with it uh, is it's going to take a while to learn how to do it. You need a lot of special tools that you've got to custom make. I certainly have made many, many kinds of lathe, lathe tools over the years. And uh, different kinds of wood, you have to figure out what works, what doesn't work. But uh, it's a lot of fun, uh, but it's very tedious. And the main thing though, it can be dangerous. And I always want to point that out to people. There's things that can happen. Uh, so always wear gloves, wear you know, uh, eye protection, masks. If you're dealing with poisonous woods like coca bolo, uh, that can literally strip the skin off your arms and get in your eyes and stuff. You've got to be in full body gear. Some people are really, really allergic to that. And you don't want to ever breathe any of these exotic woods in or it will cause major, major problems. So always wear a really good mask uh, when you're doing this. So once again, like I said, I hope this answers uh, your questions and was enjoyable and we'll see you soon.